<laughs> we have Rita Hogan hopping on the Cancer Free Canine Summit page live today. I asked Rita to come on and talk about dog use because dog use is really hard to deal with often. So I personally have a, a bulldog that came to me as a rescue. He was a rehome. And when I got him, he was on a vegan kibble. He was on vegan kibble. I was shocked that the owners had him on vegan kibble. And um, he, we've been battling some yeast and having to modify the food. We've been testing through Glacier Peak and lots of other things. And it's um, been a frustrating journey. And I reached out to Rita on her page saying, hey, what do you think about Powderco? And she goes, oh, you've got to feed it with milk thistle, which I was doing, but I was like, okay, I'm over it. I need Rita to help me. And yeast can be a precursor to cancer in your dog. So I thought, why not go live? Why not share this information? I think it's important. It's a great discussion. So let me know if you are watching live, where you're from, say hello. And we've got a bunch on the Zoom. We've got my membership, the Holistic Animal Insight members and Rita's membership. So welcome you guys. Rita, take it away. Okay. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Rita Hogan. Uh, I'm a clinical canine herbalist. I have been practicing for, uh, I think I'm in my, going into my 20th year. Um, I've been at this a long time and I absolutely love it. So i um, always learning, always learning. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, a couple of things for tonight. One, I have made a delightful PDF um, for you guys. So I'm not going to talk about dosages because I have covered that all. And I'm going to give you a copy of that PDF. And I also have a link to the PDF where it's hosted um, and then the actual PDF. So we will, uh, don't worry about writing down dosages. If I, if there's something that I didn't cover in the PDF, I will let you know to write it down. Um, so you're not, you know, busy going, you know, so we're not going to cover dosages because I've already done that for you. Um, I've also included all the links of things that I've spoken about, uh, that I'm going to speak about tonight in that PDF. So you'll have that too. I'm going to reference some articles and things like that. Um, uh, just, um, my spiel in general, um, I do just get this out of the way. So I do consults, uh, have for a really long time. Um, I have my own private community at canineherbalism.com. I have a, a link for you. Um, uh, I have a, a store at canineherbalist.com. I have some courses. I have a level one uh, holistic canine herbalism course coming out probably by fall. I have a phytoembryonic therapy training coming out probably by August. And I also have a free, uh, completely free uh, flea course coming out because um, we all hate those. And um, I've got some other stuff going on. So I have a private community where I do exclusive content and Q and A's at canineherbalism.com. It's the, uh, uh, a holistic or a canine herbalism community connection. Um, so that's all on the PDF. You can, you can take a look. So I want to get into the yeast um, and there'll be plenty of time for Q and a afterwards. Uh, so um, I'm sure you'll have some, some questions. Okay. So let's just, uh, let's just talk about yeast. So I am going to be talking about specifically uh, candida albicans. So um, that is our main yeast overgrowth that we're dealing with. Not all yeasts are bad. Okay. So not all yeast, um, you know, cause what is typically known as yeast in dogs. So take a breath because, um, what I'm going to go over in the first part of my talk, um, is a little on the stressful side, but it can be take, it can be fixed. Okay it can be fixed. Um, and first your dog is not going to implode. Okay. So even though candida overgrowth sounds menacing, 
it can be cured and it is slow and steady wins the race. If you try to go fast with, with uh, yeast, you will regret it and so will your dog. Another thing, just to precursor this, is there's a lot of gray area, okay? And whenever I do talks, people want black and white. They want to be told exactly what to do, how to do it, how much, and this is what I'm gonna do. The issue is, is dogs are individuals. It's, it's definitely my mantra, dogs are individuals. And so there's some gray areas. So you kind of have to figure things out, but I'm gonna go over those things and make them at least as easy as possible, okay? So again, not going over dosages because of the fact that I have put them all in a PDF for you. You're gonna love that PDF, it's great. Okay, so first of all, yeast, uh, a lot of times yeast goes undiagnosed in dogs because they're usually diagnosed as allergies, okay? And yeast is gastrointestinal dependent. It's a gastrointestinal dependent organism and it overgrows and it can cause damage to the intestinal lining and create an imbalance of commensal bacteria, which is also known as good bacteria, okay? Um, good bacteria keeps candida albicans I'm just gonna to refer to it as candida now, but that's the one I'm referring to. Um, the commensal bacteria, the good bacteria keeps that, that candida in check, okay? Because your, your dog is always gonna have candida. They just, they live in check with other bacteria, okay? And yeasts. Um, so I think that you, you, you keep it in check because that is basically what candida eats. Okay, so it's this whole like bacterium yeast kind of play, okay? Um, and what happens is they have like, uh, candida has these little things that go into the gut and they're, atta they're called attachments. And, um, uh, and so does other bacteria. And what we really want is we want way more beneficial bacteria than we have candida. And when that happens, things are good, okay? And one of the things that you have to understand is if you have candida overgrowth, um, nine times out of 10, or if more than nine, 9.9%, 9.9 times out of 10, uh, you have leaky gut, okay? So um, because the mucosal lining in your dog's intestinal lining are normally really tight, they're tight together, okay? Um, and that helps control pathogenic bacteria. It helps control viruses and yeast like candida from getting through and going into the bloodstream. But too much candida makes these junctions loose. And that's where leaky gut happens, okay? When the spaces between the interstitial cells widen and they create gaps where things can leak through into the, into the bloodstream. So leaky gut and candida kind of, you know, many, 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 many times go hand in hand. Um, okay, so how do you know if your dog has yeast? How do you know if your dog has candida overgrowth? Um, diagnosed with sensitivities, allergies, that can be one. Um, black skin that's not related to your dog breed, okay? Um, like when I got my dog Gertie, she had around her um, hoo-ha, she had like a circle of black yeast, just black sp speckled kind of thick uh, goo on her skin and it was yeast, okay? So we dealt with the yeast inside and that is all going away. Um, so black skin, uh, bad breath, um, easily bloating or abdominal pain. And dogs like to kind of do this stretching on the floor. They stretch their abdomen when they have abdominal pain. Um, lots of butt itching, chronic kidney and bladder infections, uh, chronic diarrhea, con con chronic constipation, chronic itching, um, the quintessential corn chip smell. They, which I actually enjoy, but because I'm gross like that, but um, uh, the corn chip smell, um, ear discharge, uh, essential fatty acid intolerance when dogs can't tolerate um, essential fatty acid supplements. Usually there is candida overgrowth, uh, feet chewing, food sensitivities, um, fungal infections on the skin, uh, hair loss on the tail specifically, and hair loss on the upper back. Uh, joint swelling, mucus stools, not always, but they are a sign. So if your dog had like mucus stool 
lots of ear discharge, fungal infection on the skin, hair loss on the tail, and it smelled like corn chips, the mucus stool is probably related to the candida overgrowth. Um, redness between the toes, uh, sensitive to humidity, having a really hard time in the summer when there's lots of humidity. Um, and dogs can also get sinus infections from yeast. So um, yeast can change quickly with what you're feeding your dog. Um, even when they're exposed to different types of water uh, can change yeast. Um, your dog's stomach needs to be highly acidic, okay? Whereas the colon um, is slightly acidic, okay? So their blood is also different and some organs need specific acidity and candida thrives in an alkaline environment. I know a lot of people talk about, oh, you want an alkaline environment, you want an alkaline environment. But one of the, the issues with an alkaline environment with a dog with candida is that alkaline environment really helps candida thrive. In fact, they try their darndest to create an alkaline environment. Um, they can survive in an acidic one too, but not as much, okay, as if you um, are giving your dog a really alkaline diet. So candida needs um, alkalinity because it has like three forms, okay? And it's important to understand this one. It's a little scientific, but it's gonna be short. Um, so candida has three forms. It has its full fungal form, okay? And it's got a hyphae form and a, a pseudo hyphae form. And um, you can use like acid producing probiotics like acidophilus and caprylic acid to help balance that alkaline acidity issue when you're dealing with candida. Um, when candida is allowed to proliferate, it's really hard on the dog as ecosystem. Okay. It gives, candida gives off ammonia. Okay. Because candida ferments sugar in the intestine and candidas are super smart because as ammonia increases, so does alkalinity. Okay. So they create this alkaline environment, which all yeasts, um, and basically it turns into a colony of yeast and it helps candida turn into pathogenic, their pathogenic form, which again will cause a form of candida related leaky gut, okay? And that's usually what's going on with most really bad yeast um, infections in dogs. So ammonia increases alkalinity of the digestive tract. And it's even been found to promote the growth of other yeasts Okay, not just candida albicans. So in an alkaline environment, candida triggers a switch because in their, um, in their just plain old yeast form and their pseudo hyphae form, they're not doing much damage, okay? But as alkalinity, as, as alkalinity goes up, they morph into their hyphae form, which is the form that causes all the problems. Okay, because when they're in their hyphae form, they can penetrate the epithelia and the endothelia in the gut, which damages the mucosa, which is like, the mucosa is, um, well, it's full of mucus. That's why it's called the mucosa. But if you, if you look at like a, your arm, think of your arm as your dog's internal terrain on, in their gut. And it's full of, just pretend my arm was just full of mucus. That is basically what the inside of your dog's uh, digestive tract looks like, except they have these little, little guys going like this, trying to move things through. And um, the inside of your dog's gastrointestinal tract is just like skin. It's just internal skin. It's internal terrain. Okay. So when candida is in its hyphae form, it can cause a lot of damage. Okay. So uh, ammonia is another reason you need to support the liver with yeast overgrowth. So not only is candida a problem with the gastrointestinal tract, it's also a problem with the liver. And when I teach my students, I always teach them that the liver is the digestive tract and the digestive tract is the liver. There, they might be, 
you know, in different spots in the body, but they're so interconnected. So you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to treat the liver while you're treating um, candida. Super, super important because of ammonia. Um, the liver turns ammonia into urea, so it can be excreted through the kidneys, okay? And when you get too much ammonia, then you're gonna have a problem with the kidneys. So what sucks about yeast is they give off byproducts, um, and so do other pathogenic fungi and bacteria. They give off these byproducts that the liver has to process and it causes a lot of free radicals in the body, which causes you know excess aging, it causes disease, it can cause cancer. Um, and so it's really important to get yeast under check, okay? So when you treat yeast too fast, you can get die off, okay? And that releases a higher level of ammonia and a higher level of toxins. And your liver needs a lot of help to deal with all of this, whatever things, what's going on, okay? Um, I'm sure you heard, you've heard things like, oh, well, it, it's gonna get worse before it gets better, okay? True, but we don't want it to do that. That's why it's slow and steady wins the race, okay? We don't want our dogs to suffer. As humans, we can get in bed and we can, you know, uh, um, right? But still, that's a sign that your body is having too much die off too quickly and your, your liver can't handle it. Same thing for your dog, okay? The, too many toxins are being released when you're dealing with yeast. And that's why you're getting that die off. And a lot of dogs will just itch themselves bloody when they're having all this die off. And we don't want that. So again, slow and steady wins the race. Okay. So when yeast are allowed to proliferate, they act like mushrooms. Okay. They're, they're a fungi. So they act like mushrooms and they create this like mycelium like structure if you know anything about mycelium, it's these little tentacles that reach out under the forest floor and they can go miles and miles. So yeast has a tendency to do that too. And they work, and unlike humans, um, yeast and bacteria work together for the common good and they do it diligently. And uh, they definitely have each other's back and they form biofilm. And um, they do, you know, they try their best to basically perform a hostile takeover of the gastrointestinal tract. And they're really good at it, but they have an enemy. Lack of sugar. Lack of sugar is yeast enemy. So um, uh, if, uh, I'm sorry, hold on. Poppy, am I still online? Poppy? Poppy? Can anyone hear me? Okay, you're, I'm still here. Sorry. Thank you. I thought I was gone. Okay, so um, uh, if you you have kind of have to deal with biofilm. So if you suspect your dog has yeast overgrowth, you have to deal with biofilm. Film. Um, biofilm is like a coating that bacteria and yeast form for protection, and they also hide from the immune system. Okay, so this is why you give your dogs digestive enzymes away from food um, to break down fats, fiber, and protein um, and biofilm. Uh, uh, for those of you that know Julianne Lee from Adored Beast, um, she talks about the importance of feeding cellulase as it breaks down the yeast protective coating. And I definitely concur with that. Um, biofilm formation is normally uh, bodily functions, much like the inflammation response. So with the right stimulus, bio, biofilm can run amok and bacteria and yeast stressors, which are antibiotics and um, non-biological antifungals uh, definitely cause an acceleration of biofilm formation because when bacteria and yeast are stressed, they do everything to protect themselves. Okay, so you can look at like, you know, how many, how many rounds of antibiotics has my dog had? Like how, how many rounds of steroids has my dog had? Um, usually, it, you know, usually it only takes one round of antibiotics to, to cause candida to overgrow if you do not do certain things while your dogs are on antibiotics. Um, 
Another example of a, bi a bacterial and yeast stressor in, uh, is steroids, which shuts off the immune system and really opens the door to pathogens. Um, they can do whatever they want when the immune system is off. So when the immune system keeps, the immune system keeps biofilm in check and um, biofilm really isn't easily diagnosed and it doesn't culture well. So um, uh, it's hard to know, but the good thing is, is that almost all of the herbs and supplements that are used for, for yeast, um, many, many, many of them address biofilm as well. So that's a very, um, a very good thing. So here are a few herbs and supplements for biofilm. And remember, I'm not going to deal with um, dosages because I have that all in a PDF for you. So um, berberine. Uh, berberine uh, is high in, uh, herbs that are high in berberine help balance the bacterial and yeast overgrowth. Okay, um, Oregon grape, barberry, golden seal, celadine, um, adored beast liver tonic, which is a very popular product. Um, it, it's, a, it's a water extraction in glycerin, but it has barberry and celadine, and it also has milk thistle. Um, it, I think it's a really good starter tonic for the liver to support. Um, you, for dogs, you don't really want to use alcohol, alcoholics extractions of barberry or celadine because the alkaloids are too strong. So if you're going to use those, those two, you want to, I would use the adored beast liver tonic or a glycerin of barberry or celadine. Uh, that's, a, that's an ex extract that's made with glycerin. Um, digestive enzymes. So you give digestive enzymes with each meal when feeding raw. Um, if you're feeding kibble and your dog has yeast, you want to get it off the kibble. It's really hard to cure yeast on kibble. Um, digestive enzymes with cellulase help break up biofilm in the digestive tract. Um, you feed digestive enzymes three hours after meals. Um, you can put it in a broth. You can put it in like raw goat's milk um, uh, to, just to get it into your dog. Um, I like to do just a little bit of broth, but because um, uh, my dogs are my dogs will easily lick it, but it just depends on your dog um, and definitely give a digestive enzyme with cellulase. And if you can't find one with cellulase, just get cellulase in general and add it to uh, your digestive enzymes. And I do have that uh, when to feed those in the PDF. Um, another thing that helps with biofilm and yeast is fermented foods. So um, I teach and work on a system of energetics. So if you don't know what your dog's energetics are, um, I highly recommend taking my energetics course. A link for that will be in um, the PDF and uh, you can take it in a weekend. It's a short course, but it will really open up and expand your um, relationship with your dog as an individual. So I'm gonna to mention to you that some herbs are warming, cooling or neutral, and that all has to do with your dog's energetics. And if your dog is suffering from major yeast issues, it's super important to know what your dog's energetics are, okay? Um, fermented foods are, are warming, um, different levels of warmth, but they're definitely warming and not really good for dogs that are cool. I'm sorry, for dogs that are already hot or warm. Um, they're good for dogs that are cool. Uh, fermented uh, ferments are very powerful. Um, fermented vegetables, apple cider vinegar, um, raw fermented bone broth, um, raw kefir, um, raw goat's milk. Uh, these are all fermented foods. And uh, well, as long as the goat's milk is fermented, uh, not all goat milk is fermented. But um, um, they help balance the gut and help minimize biofilm formation. And you don't need a lot of it. And I have some recommendations for dosages in the PDF. Another thing that's really great is fulvic and humic acid. Um, it's found in healthy, uh, and, and healthy and ancient soils. Fulvic acids come from the earth. Um, think of it as soil nutrition. Um, they help balance your dog's microbiome, very important. They help decrease candida populations. 
It also helps negate the effects of glyphosate, okay, which is messing with your microbiome and your animal's microbiome. But uh, fulvic acid can help protect the microbiome from the negative effects of glyphosate. And if you don't know what glyphosate is, it's an ingredient in Roundup that is cancerous and it's wreaking havoc on all of our GI systems. So for you and for anyone else, please, put fulvic and humic acid into your diet. Um, exercise, it's not an herb, but it is, I would say, a supplement. Um, fresh air, oxygen from exercise is an integral part of health. Um, breathing fresh air helps oxygenate cells. It decreases inflammation, which is very important with candida, and it supports a healthy immune system. Movement also helps stimulate the lymphatic system, which is like a nervous system of, of nutrition and toxins that run through your body. Um, and it's the moving the lymphatic system is really important on eliminating toxins. Okay. Uh, next one is lion's mane mushroom. Okay. Lion's mane mushroom is good at stopping biofilm formation. It helps dismantle the biofilm coating. Um, reishi mushroom complements lion's mane because it's a really, um, important immune support fungus. Um, reishi is warming, so just keep that in mind. Uh, monolaurin, which is extracted from coconuts. Monolaurin is an excellent anti-yeast, anti-biofilm remedy. It breaks down and decreases biofilm proliferation. That means it keeps it from spreading with um, lauracinin um, acid content. Um, NAC, now of course I'm going to probably destroy this, but it's N-acetylcysteine. Uh, I did my best, but it's NAC and it's a really powerful substance that helps clear the body of heavy metals and other toxins. And there's a direct correlation between heavy metal content and yeast overgrowth. So, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, NAC also helps break down biofilm in the intestines, okay? Um, olive leaf extract. So olive leaf extract is one of my favorite remedies. Um, you use at least 12% olaprin. The one drawback of the powdered leaf is that it can cause vomiting and nausea. So I use the now brand of olive leaf because I don't experience the nausea um, with that brand because it's, it's just at 12%. Um, but olive leaf helps eradic eradicate biofilm. It also packs a... It, it, it's antibacterial, it's antiviral, and it's anti-yeast, okay? It's a very good yeast remedy. Um, olive leaf gemotherapy and phytoembryonic therapy. Um, gemotherapy and phytoembryonic therapy is using the buds, the young tissues, the embryonic roots, the germinating seeds of different plants. And olive leaf is using the bud of the olive um, uh, of the leaf, and it uh, can be in a homeopathic preparation, which is gemotherapy, or a stronger, what's called a mother tincture in a phytoembryonic therapy. Um, and I carry these on my website and it's in the PDF. So don't worry about where you can get them, but olive leaf gemotherapy and phytoembryonic therapy don't cause nausea. At least I haven't experienced it in any dogs or people. Um, it's a different part of the plant than the leaf, but it's very effective at helping eradicate biofilm. It's help, it helps with Lyme disease and it definitely is anti-candida, okay? I really like to combine the powdered leaf with the gemo and the phyto for really strong cases of um, yeast and Lyme. So um, oregano oil, uh, oregano oil, is very beneficial for biofilm. I'm talking about an infused oil with oregano, the fresh oregano. I'm not talking about essential oil. You can use the essential oil, but you can only use it for a short period of time. And I don't really recommend it, but some people do. Um, if you're gonna use the essential oil internally of oregano, you wanna use it under the care of a trained aromatherapist. That's an aromatherapist with at least 200 plus hours of aromatherapy and chemistry, okay? But um, I like to infuse fresh oregano in like olive oil, 
Okay. You infuse it for just like a week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, and then you take out the oregano and you have the infused oil. It helps break down biofilm in the gut. It's antibacterial. It's antifungal. It has levels of caracavol, which um, is very powerful anti-yeast. And I have the amounts that you should use in the PDF. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii. Uh, this is a yeast that acts like a probiotic. And um, it's very powerful in helping control candida populations. And it also helps reestablish balance in the microbiome. So Saccharomyces is a, I mean, it's a, it's a powerhouse player. Okay. So, and this is why. So if you ever have a dog that no matter how many um, probiotics and prebiotics you give the dog, nothing works. Okay. I'll tell you why it doesn't work. Okay. There's a thing called glycocalyx and IgA inside the gut. Okay. And Saccharomyces boulardii increases glycocalyx and IgA production. That allows commensal bacteria to grow and populate the gut. If, you, if your dog or yourself does not have the adequate levels of IgA and glycocalyx, you can give them all the probiotics you've ever wanted to waste your money on, um, and it's going to go right out the poop chute. It's not going to be absorbed. They're not going to, uh, they're not going to form populations in the gut. Glycocalyx is, a per, is the protective coating that lines your, your dog's gut's epithelial cells, those little microvilla layers, okay? So that beneficial bacteria can adhere to the gut lining. It has to be able to adhere. It's an integral part of a healthy microbiome and it's needed, um, it's definitely needed for the success of um, expensive probiotic supplements and foods. IgA production is dependent on glycocalyx levels, okay? They're dependent on each other. IgA is an antibody and it's part of your dog's immune system, okay? It's also known as a blood protein and antibodies help the immune system fight off infections, candida, toxins, pathogenic bacteria and viruses. And so um, if your dog's gut, um, if it's not, doesn't have a healthy level of IgA and glycocalyx, um, it's just not gonna get healthy. And that's where Saccharomyces boulardii uh, plays in. So when I work with a dog with yeast overgrowth, we always do at least four to five weeks of just Saccharomyces boulardii, okay? Then we start working with probiotics. Um, and I have um, what you need to feed in the PDF uh, and how much you need to give. Um, the next one up for bat is turmeric. Uh, turmeric is very popular. It's very warming. Um, it's for cool dogs. It supports the disruption of biofilm. And it's an anti-inflammatory, which all candida dogs need. Um, you want to avoid it in dogs who have a hard time keeping themselves cool or regulating their body temperature or dogs that are very warm or hot. Um, you always want to give turmeric with fat, like maybe MCT oil that comes from coconuts, uh, that so that it will um, absorb better. Um, but studies have shown that curcuma longa, which is turmeric, um, completely inhibits the growth of candida. So I use it, I always use turmeric in a formula. Um, and you'll see it in a lot of anti-yeast formulas. Um, three really great for candida overgrowth and biofilm is chlorella, bennonite clay, and activated charcoal, okay? So when biofilms break down, they leave a lot of cellular debris behind and toxins and heavy metals um, that can circulate in the body, which increases the liver's toxic load. So chlorella, bennonite clay, and activated charcoal, you don't have to use them together, but there are three options depending on your dog. Um, they help bind those toxins and remove heavy metals and get them out of the body. They're what is known as a binder, okay? And we need to use binders whenever we're working with yeast, okay? So chlorella helps chelate heavy metals out of the body. Um, and here's the kicker, okay? 
all yeast is dependent on heavy metals. Okay. Their candida albicans is dependent on heavy metals. And as people and dogs, we are chock full of metals. Okay. Because our environment is so polluted. So, um, Chlorella helps get rid of heavy metals out of the body. It helps waste move through the digestive tract. And um, it's known as a binder. You can use other binders with chlorella as well. And I have this in the PDF, so don't worry. Um, chlorella works really good like with bentonite clay. It also works by itself. Um, but if you have a really stubborn case of of yeast, I might use a couple binders and you can use bentonite clay. And I have a link in the PDF to an article I wrote on how to specifically use bentonite clay. So don't worry about that. Um, and you can use zeolite, uh, which I also have a link. Animal Wellness put out a really great article a while back about how to use zeolite for your dog. And I've included that on the PDF. Um, uh, I use clay water with heavy infections. Um, candida binds to your dog's tissues through its relationship with specifically mercury and dogs are chock full of mercury. Um, I once had a client when I used to board dogs that gave me <laughs> their, um, it's actually not funny, but, um, they gave me their dog's food to feed them over the week that I had the dog. They fed their dog six cans of tuna a day. And I will tell you that dog was so sick and we had to use binders and things to get mercury out of the body and the dog made a complete recovery. Do not feed your dogs tuna, okay? Don't do it. Um, tuna is super high in mercury, but we get near mercury from pharmaceuticals, from vaccines, from the air that we breathe. Um, so mercury is a major issue when ridding the body of candida. But again, a lot of the herbs that work for candida also help remove metals from the body. Um, but I definitely love bene uh, beneficial clays. I love zeolite. Um, I love chlorella. They all do a good job at getting um, binding toxins and getting them out of the body. Um, there's uh, one specific remedy called mountain pine. Now, um, I did not put this in the PDF. So if you can write this down, um, it's called my, mountain pine phytoembryonic therapy. I carry it in my store. I give that for 12 weeks uh, during yeast treatment. Um, it helps get mercury out of the body and I use it in conjunction with chlorella. Um, the mountain pine uh, dosages are pretty much the same uh, for the other general therapies and phytoembryonic therapies in the PDF. And if you have any questions, you can always email me. Um, uh, again, I use mountain pine mixed with chlorella and sometimes bentonite clay, depending on the case, um, to help remove mercury from the body. Um, okay, so that's some supplements and herbs that help with biofilm in conjunction with candida. Um, I wanna talk about uh, yeast die off, okay? So my colleague and friend, Julianne Lee, wrote a great article called Skin Disease in Dogs, What to Do When Yeast Attacks. I highly recommend reading that article. Um, I have a link to it in the PDF. Uh, it's a great article, go ahead and read it. Um, but you wanna look at the metals in your dog's diet. So they can be found in supplements, kibble, diet, uh, in the foods that you're feeding, um, vaccines, pharmaceuticals. You know, Do you live near polluted areas? Do you live near a highway, very high in metals? Don't, do you not filter your dog's water? Even if you have a beautiful well water, you need to filter your dog's water, okay? Filter, filter, filter. Um, if you feed the fulvic and humic acid that will add back in the trace minerals that you can take away from filtering your dog's water. Um, and then also something that's overlooked with, um, uh, metals is the air that we breathe in our homes. Um, there's lots of heavy metal um, in, in, in our environment, in carpets, in, in different things that we expose ourselves. And um, we can breathe in 
metals and breathe in toxins. And so a good air purifier um, is definitely something I encourage everyone to save up and purchase. Um, I really like the air purifier called the Air Doctor. Uh, it's a very good, um, it's a very good filter. Um, okay, so too many heavy metals in your dog's tissues um, definitely contribute to candida overgrowth. Um, too many metals increase oxidation and free radical production, which taxes the liver and con contributes to systemic stress. So when I, ever I talk about yeast, I talk about liver, 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 liver. Always support the liver when working with anything gastrointestinal related, and that includes candida overgrowth. Um, uh, yeast is not, the unfortunate thing about yeast is it's not benign, whether it's dead or living, okay? And I'm not talking about nutritional yeast, I'm talking about candida. Um, yeast gives off toxins, and when it dies, it releases heavy metals that it binds to, okay? So when it's living, it binds to heavy metals, but when it dies, it lets those go and they circulate in the bloodstream, okay? So you can pretty much assume that if you have a dog with a really bad yeast problem, you have a metal problem as well. So you wanna treat them, you wanna treat them together. Um, when you're working on clearing out candida, you wanna make sure that you know the signs that you're cleansing too fast. Okay, slow and steady wins the race. Um, nice and slow. Hot spots. If you get hot spots, you're doing it too quickly. Severe itching, lethargy, diarrhea, and excretions from the eyes, ears, skin, and anus. If things are pouring out of your dog, cut back, go slower. Okay, it's not a race. Um, I think slow and steady wins the race is so important because it's important to avoid yeast die off reactions. Um, and it's important because yeast, again, is a heavy metal binder when it's alive and when it dies, it releases those. So you wanna go slow. You don't want the body dealing with that much metals and that much toxins at one time, okay? So whenever I deal with any type of yeast issue, depending on the dog and depending on the case, but like if the dosage is, let's say the dosage is eight drops of something or 500 milligrams, I'm gonna cut that dose in half and I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna start slow, okay? Um, giving clay water when any sign of die off is present is important. Um, chlorella, mountain pine, zeolite, you can see you know, which one of those work with your dog, um, but giving binders when you're treating yeast is, is a good thing to do. Um, okay. Diet. When a, this is what I do when a dog has yeast. Okay. And I'm speaking to raw feeders because, um, uh, you, you have, you're going to have a really hard time getting rid of yeast on kibble. Uh, can you get rid of yeast, then go back to kibble? Sure. You could but you need to go on a very minimal ingredient kibble and you need to give a lot of fresh food and enzymes if you're gonna do kibble. I have a great article on my website, canineherbalist.com uh, about making kibble healthier, okay? Um, but, so I'm speaking for fresh food feeding. So what I do is I only feed meat, bone, and organ. I feed no vegetables whatsoever except for green leafy greens, okay? I usually do it in the form of powders. And for 12 weeks, the, your dog is not gonna get anything but meat, bone, and organ. That's it. You have to starve the yeast, that's number one. And then give herbs that help support the die off, support the liver. But, and that's me, someone else may have a different anti-candida diet, but I can tell you right now that it works, it works, it works. So what, um, you could do something really basic like muscle meat, organ powder, and like something like four leaf rover, uh, better bones, like a calcium powder or a ground eggshell powder, um, meat, bone, and organ, okay? For 12 weeks, nothing else except for greens and, and some supplements. 
And that is my basic anti-candida diet. You can do meat, bone, and organ fresh. You can do fresh organs. You can do fresh bone, uh, fresh muscle meat. Um, but, uh, and you can make it simple. It, it, your dog is going to be just fine. Um, in fact, that diet is better than a thousand times better than kibble, especially when you add in trace minerals and things like you can add in phytoplankton, uh, for amino acids. Um, you can add in other things, green things and like fulvic and humic acid, um, to help round out nutrition if you want to. Um, but nothing, nothing, nothing that feeds sugar or turns to sugar in the gut. Once you reset the candida, you can start adding in veggies. I only add veggies that are energetically appropriate to my dogs and my clients' dogs, but you can add veggies in, but you can't add them in when you're dealing with candida overgrowth. That is super important. Um, uh, and I mean, don't, no disrespect for saying this, but this is my, I've been doing this for 20 years and this comes up all the time. So I'm just going to say it because, well, I'm here for you. So um, you have to be patient. You not get overzealous adding in all your, you know, we all have emotional drama when it comes to our dogs. You know, I don't think anyone can say that you don't have any emotional drama when it comes to your dogs. We all do. I do for sure. Um, my, my, my dog had to wear a cone recently. I was a mess. I was a mess. And I tried not to be a mess around her about it because, you know, she's sitting there having a cone on. Um, but I had some emotional drama. So, you know, an example of this might be, you know, oh, you know, poor Fluffy uh, can't have his favorite carrot snack while we're dealing with this yeast-free diet. I feel so bad for him. You know, don't do this to yourself and don't do it to your dog. Be strong, be confident. We're gonna, we're gonna get a balance on this yeast. And then my dog and myself can go back to normal and have a normal relationship with our dog without them, you know, itching, biting, scratching, and smelling and losing hair. So um, vibration is everything. So, you know, it's important to be confident and let your dog know that they're going to be better for this diet and they're going to be able to live a normal life. And um, you just have to take it slow and steady. Okay. And how slow? Uh, extremely slow. You want your dog to be well and symptom free for at least three to six months before adding anything new or any starches. Okay. Um, three months, 12 weeks. Uh, you can go, you can double that if you want. If you have a really hard case of it, um, you want to keep the diet simple. And then when you start adding things, you want to add things in one at a time, one thing at a time to see how they do with it. I like to add in one item every three to six weeks. Um, I really take my time with this because I don't want to do it again. Um, I want to do it, you know, it can be one and done. And um, you just have to be patient. Uh, if you tell, if you see that something's upsetting him when you add something in, then just to discontinue it. And again, I always use energetics whenever possible. Um, uh, I think that it's important to have expectations, at, you know, know your expectations and that repair doesn't happen overnight. Too much too soon causes die off and you can cause thinning hair um, and alopecia. If you have any thinning hair and alopecia, after you start doing a candida cleanse, you just need to go slower. You might just need to just do the diet without any support and then start slow, slowly adding in uh, anti-candida herbs. But you're always going to add in liver support, no matter what. And I'm going to talk about that now. Um, uh, okay, so I'm going to go over a natural medicine list. Again, I have included it in the PDF. And then when I'm done with that, we're going to do question and answers. Okay, for those of you that can't stay with us over an hour, um, it will be recorded and you can watch the replay. Okay, so we're gonna go over this list. A couple things about the list. Uh, extracts, which is glycerin extract or tincture. Um, tinctures can be given together. I like to use tinctures with, with um, dogs that have candida because glycerin can contribute to 
candida, it not so much, but um, it can for those really hard, hard cases. Um, but we don't give a lot of tincture, um, very small amounts. And those are all on the PDF. Um, when you add in something new, okay, if it's not a formula or adding single ingredients in, you want to separate them by three to four days. <clears throat> okay, you don't want to just throw everything at your dog at one time, go very slowly. You can do three to four days or 10 days, eight days, just depends on your dog. It's important to put the liquids, the tinctures and the extracts in your dog's mouth if you can, okay? You can mix it with a little water and syringe it in. Um, you can do that before eating. Usually you're gonna give them two times a day. Um, powders can be in food unless noted by me on the PDF, okay? And on the PDF, I know exactly how to take it. So you don't have to write that down. Okay, so let's go through this list. Now, I'm gonna give you a list of anti-yeast remedies. The list is not to give all of them to your dog, okay? It's your responsibility to do a little research on that herb and figure out if that herb fits your dog's individual profile. And I have given you some hints and some, some aspects of a dog's personality or I'm mean, a dog's constitution um, to help you figure out if that herb might be good for your dog, okay? But when we're treating yeast, we wanna support the liver, we wanna help break down biofilm, okay? And we want to balance that yeast, okay? Um, and I usually work between four and six herbs or a formula. Um, uh, apple cider vinegar, okay? Apple cider vinegar is good for spraying on the external yeast as well as giving internally. Now, apple cider vinegar is a fermented product. It's warming. So it's not good for dogs that are hot or very warm, okay? It's good for dogs that are cool. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please, please, please take my energetics course. Um, it's the best $75 you'll ever spend. So um, uh, apple cider vinegar balances your dog's pH and it helps can keep candida in check. And it's definitely anti-candida, okay? So apple cider vinegar for cool dogs is definitely a good thing to, to kind of like give your dog um, on a daily basis for a few months, then I usually stop and then I'll give them, you know, I'll probably give them a month break and then I'll start up again. Um, European alder, and this is a phytoembryonic therapy or a gemotherapy. Um, it's, this is that's a liquid extract. Um, very good for yeast from antibiotic damage. Okay, notice that's specific. It's good for yeast overgrowth that is caused by antibiotic damage. It's great for dogs that have candida mixed with autoimmune disease, lung weakness, and vaccine reactions. Okay, um, again, I have all of the dosages on the PDF. Uh, we covered bentonite clay. That helps the liver. It helps the kidneys deal with die-off of toxins. Uh, clay is negatively charged and toxins are positively charged. And so they bind to each other. Um, and bentonite clay can also help probiotics be more effective. So that's a good one to use. Black poplar gemotherapy or phytoembryonic therapy. Very good at helping remove heavy metals. Um, for dogs with a history of bladder infections, weakness in the hind end, and also dogs that are cool, okay? It's a, it's a warming remedy. Calendula, one of my favorite anti-yeast remedies. Um, calendula can be used long-term. It can be used acutely or, or long-term. It's warming. It's for cool dogs uh, when you're going to use it long-term. Anyone can use it acutely for short-term. Um, it's an excellent antifungal. It helps balance out the inner terrain. It helps create excellent internal skin. Um, I use it in a lot of yeast formulas. Um, it makes the internal tissues of your dog inhospitable to pathogenic yeast accumulation, okay? Um, it also helps stimulate the lymphatics, which is important for getting rid of toxins. 
Uh, cedars of Lebanon. That is a gemotherapy or a phytoembryonic therapy. Um, it's antifungal. Uh, you can use it externally or internally. It's good for dogs that are hot on the out, the skin is hot, it's itchy, it's dry. It shows dryness, not wetness, but dryness. So a hot spot is wet. So this is for dry, crusty skin. Uh, dogs with autoimmune disease, uh, dogs that might have problems with mast cells, um, and then dogs that are kind of depleted. Um, the difference between a gemotherapy and a phytoembryonic therapy is gemotherapies are homeopathic and phytos are more, are stronger, you use less medicine. So it just depends on your dog. Um, sometimes you use a combination of both, it work, which works great. Um, cilantro. Cilantro helps bring down heavy metals in the system, okay? Which again, coincides with yeast overgrowth. Um, I always combine cilantro with chlorella. Okay, cilantro needs a binder. Chaga mushroom, super high in antioxidant. I use chaga when there's yeast problems with dogs that are very sick and might have other things like cancer or autoimmune disease. Um, chaga is very high in antioxidants. You can use a powdered chaga um, or uh, adored beast has a liquid chaga, okay? Um, I only use this chaga unt until they're healed and then I stop. Um, chaga is an endangered mushroom. Um, it's really not a mushroom, it's more of a mycelium, but um, it, it's endangered. So I'm very careful on how I use chaga as an herbalist. Um, dio, uh, diatomaceous earth, um, you're gonna use, you can use food grade diatomaceous earth. It works like bentonite clay. Um, it helps break up the cellular wall structure of candida and helps eliminate biofilm. Um, elm, Elmus campestris. This is a gemotherapy or a phytoembryonic therapy. It helps um, inflammation in the gut. It helps dogs that have adrenal imbalances. And this one is for dogs that have candida with damp skin conditions. It's the opposite of the cedars of Lebanon. Okay, so this is damp skin conditions, hot spots. You can use it internally and externally. Uh, the next one is echinacea, lovely antifungal, strong. It disrupts the fungal cell wall structure. You're going to use it, and I have this in the PDF, uh, for a maximum of two weeks, and then you give it a rest, and then you can start it again. Um, sometimes it's in yeast formulas, um, but uh, it's high in alkaloids and you just want to be careful on how long you're going to use it. Um, fennel. Fennel is warming. It protects the liver. It breaks down biofilm. It helps prevent biofilm and it's a strong antifungal. Ginger. Lovely anti-yeast. It's hot. It's for cool dogs. It helps directly with yeast. It helps it also helps disperse, um, ginger helps disperse yeast in the gut. Okay, it, it basically is like the party police. So we love ginger for cool dogs. Um, golden seal is like echinacea, it's very strong. Uh, it increases white blood cells, it supports the immune system. It's high in berberine, which is anti-biofilm and antifungal. Um, and it, inhib it inhibits candida albicans growth. Um, again, you're gonna use it for two weeks, then you're gonna take a break and then you can add it in again. Um, licorice root. Licorice root is an antifungal. Um, it adds moisture to the gut. It's used in a lot of formulas. Um, it helps other herbs work better. Uh, you wanna use deglycerized licorice. Um, and this is found in many kits. And I'll talk about the kits when I'm done with these uh, individual herbs. Marshmallow root, one of my favorites. Marshmallow root helps protect the mucosal layer in the intestinal lining, and it helps repair the damage from candida. Um, it also helps flush out the system when they're dying. Um, like licorice, 
Um, if you're gonna make a tea out of marshmallow root, you wanna do a cold infusion, you do it overnight. So you use the chopped root, you put the water in and you let it sit overnight and then you strain it and then you can use it as a liquid. You can also use it as a powder. Um, marshmallow root is cooling. I like it for warm dogs. If you have a cool dog, then I would suggest using the licorice root. Um, you can use marshmallow root for short periods of time with, um, with uh, cooler dogs. Milk thistle. Milk thistle, every dog that's dealing with yeast should be on milk thistle. Um, milk thistle is nice and neutral. You can use it as a powder. You can use it as a phytoembryonic therapy and you can use it as a tincture. Um, I have dosages for all of those in the PDF. So milk thistle helps with die off. It breaks down biofilm. It supports lymphatics. It pro it's protects the liver. It provides support. It checks all the anti-yeast boxes. Um, it regenerates liver cells. Um, it also helps protect the cellular mitochondria of the body because mitochondria can get damaged from the breakdown of waste when yeast die off, okay? Um, it definitely should be part of every liver protocol. Um, I like to, even if I'm doing like something like a door beast um, liver tonic, I like to add in extra milk thistle as a powder or a, a tincture or a phytoembryonic therapy together with a door beast liver tonic if you're using that as your liver support because, um, the liver tonic in Adored Beast, the milk thistle is kind of like just a co-character. The, the main characters of that formula are definitely the celadine and the barberry. Um, olive leaf, which we discussed before. Um, oregano, we discussed that before. Oregon grape root is an excellent antifungal. It's high in berberine content. It's antibacterial, it's anti-yeast, it's antiviral. Um, it's definitely anti-pathogenic. Um, I like to use that in formula with other herbs. Uh, and I have all the amounts for that and how to use that in the PDF. Um, neem, neem, love neem. Um, a lot of people use neem externally, but you can use it internally as a powder um, or as the oil. Uh, it helps stimulate the immune system and it's a strong antifungal. Um, a star antifungal like olive leaf is Podiarco. Um, you're gonna see it in almost every yeast preparation. You have to just start slow with this one, you know, half the dose. It's really a potent antifungal. It's an antibacterial. It's one of the best remedies for dealing with candida overgrowth. Um, it, it contains uh, Lapacol, which interferes with the, it, with the way yeast communicate. Um, it's called sorium sensing. Um, it makes them hard to communicate with each other. And when they can't communicate with each other, they can't have a party. And we wanna keep them from having parties, okay? Um, it depresses the fungal, the cellular fungal um, respiration of the yeast. So Podiarco is a very important anti-yeast remedy. Um, uh, rye. Um, this is a phyto or a gemo. It's an antifungal. It helps dogs that have autoimmune disease. It's for dogs that are cool in their energetics, uh, liver weakness, constipation, and high liver enzymes. So if your dog had high liver enzymes and a candida infection, um, this definitely would be a good remedy. Um, spirulina. Spirulina is slightly warming. Um, it helps slow yeast overgrowth and prevent reoccurrence. It's an antifungal, it's an antibacterial, it has a lot of trace minerals, it's a nutrient, it's nourishing, it does not feed candida. Um, it helps support the immune system and it promotes beneficial bacteria formation. Um, my favorite source of spirulina is Dr. DeBias's green mint. Um, it's an algae and spirulina mix. I really like his spirulina. It's nice and clean. Um, I did give you the, uh, the uh, link for that spirulina in, um, in the PDF. Sweet almond, uh, that's a phyto or a gemmo. 
Um, dogs with dryness, okay? Uh, dogs that have hypothyroid, dogs that have been diagnosed with IBS or have obsessive behavior plus candida overgrowth, this is a good remedy. Um, thyme, kitchen thyme, antibacterial, antifungal, biofilm, anti-candida, very warming, okay? So for cool dogs, you can use it as an infusion, which is like a tea, um, or you can use it as an extract or a, um, uh, a tincture. Very, very little amount is needed, and I've included that in the PDF. Uh, turkey tail mushroom. Love turkey tail mushroom. Very plentiful, not endangered, kills candida, supports the immune system, anti-tumor. Um, love, love, love this one. Um, mushrooms need, you know, mushrooms, unless they upset your dog's stomach, should be given separately uh, in the gut. So I usually give them in a little bit of goat's milk or a little bit of broth. Um, uh, Adored Beast has a liquid I sell in my store of turkey tail. You could do that. Um, uh, Four Leaf Rover has a really good turkey tail mushroom powder that's hot water extracted and then dried. Um, it's very important that your turkey tail be hot water extracted and dried if it's a powder. Or if you're getting just regular turkey tail powder that has not been hot water extracted and dried, you want to definitely put that in boiling water and help break down the, the cell wall of the turkey tail. Otherwise, you're just doing um, uh, like nu nutritional mushrooms versus medicinal. Um, wineberry. Uh, this is a gemo or a phyto. Um, wineberry is slightly warming. It helps drain yeast and enhance the effect of Saccharomyces boulardii. Okay. So those two taken together is a good idea if your dog is cool. Um, it helps combat yeast. Uh, it also helps dogs that have arthritis, inflammation, papillomas, and joint issues. So say your dog is a little on the cool side, has some creaky joints, little arthritis, that might be a really good remedy for your dog to, in, to include in their um, anti-yeast protocol. Um, okay, so I'm almost finished with our uh, supplements. Um, just hang in there. So homeopathy. Homeopathy uh, works well for candida overgrowth. Now, you definitely want to uh, talk to a homeopath or an herbalist that works with homeopathy. Um, or, uh, or you can look at like... Um, I think uh, I got homeopathic uh, care for dogs and cats by Don Hamilton. I put that in the PDF, or you can join uh, Dr. D. Blanco's website. She has a great website. She has a lot of learning with, um, with uh, homeopathy, but uh, homeopathy like Babisha, Barberry, Borax, Kells Carb, Candida, taking the no sod for Candida is always a good idea. Um, the Candida albicanus no sod. Um, Carbo Veg, Echinacea, Ferrum, Ferrum Foss, Graphites, uh, Chrysodium, uh, Merck Sulf, uh, Nux Vomica, uh, Sulfuricum, and Thuya. Um, I have that all written down in the PDF, so don't worry. Um, but those are some really good homeo homeopathy that you can do, but I really love the Candida albicanus no sod. I try to include that in a lot of my protocols unless it's not good for the individual, individual dog. Okay, I'm gonna just briefly go over some supplements. Um, caprylic acid or capric acid, it's found in MCT oil, which is medium train, chain, not train, but chain triglyceride oil comes from coconuts. Um, very high in those acids, those are very antifungal. Uh, as I mentioned before, digestive enzymes with cellulase, uh, vitamin C helps boost the adrenals and the immune system. Um, you want to give vitamin C as much as your dog can take. If your dog gets diarrhea, you cut back. Um, B complex with folate, not folic acid, is really good to take with vitamin C. Uh, biotin. Um, biotin helps remove mercury from the body. And remember, candida attaches itself to mercury. 
Okay. So you want to use, when you use biotin with a dog that's full of yeast, you want to make sure again, to use a binder like chlorella, clay water, zeolite, or you can also use diatomaceous earth if it's food grade. Um, MSM, bioavailable sulfur. It helps cleanse heavy metals. It helps bring down candida attachment sites and it interrupts the ability of candida to bind to mercury in the first place. MSM is a great, great supplement. It helps support the um, immune system. It helps to support the, the musculoskeletal system. Um, it's a good remedy. So um, omega fatty acids, um, dogs should be on omega fatty acid uh, supplement. Um, omega fatty acids are huge candida killers and they definitely help balance candida. Um, the issue here, so if your dog can't tolerate fatty acids, um, they most likely have a bad case of yeast overgrowth. So what you do is you don't give fatty acids right away. You work with your dog to balance out some of that yeast before you add in the omega fatty acids. Um, so if you give omega fatty acids and your dog like gets dizzy, has their stomach gets distended, they get lethargic, they're having yeast die off from the omega fatty acids. So you wanna cut back. Um, um, but omega-3 fatty acids help remove heavy metals out of the body. Um, and they definitely help your dog's immune system, which is gonna help balance out that candida. Um, our alpha lipoic acid, which is like organic sulfur compound, that helps remove mercury. It's an antioxidant. Um, it helps with methylation, which is an entire different conversation, but it helps with methylation, which is uh, really helps the liver, uh, the liver work better. It helps with healthy gene expression and protein function, and it definitely helps neutralize heavy metals. Uh, we've talked about Saccharomyces boulardii. Um, Bifobacterium is a really good bacterium to feed when there's yeast overgrowth. It helps regulate the digestive process and decrease digestive upset. Um, it's, it's a soil-based probiotic, basically. Uh, probiotics like acidophilus um, that produce lactic and acidic acid can help with um, pH in the intestines, specifically for dogs with candida. Um, pre and probiotics uh, definitely can help. I like to give them after the die-off period is over um, when your dog is more stable if they have a really bad case of yeast overgrowth. Um, humic and fulvic acids, I mentioned that before, it's in the PDF. And then last but not least, glutamine. Um, glutamine is a key amino acid that helps enable the, the lining of the small intestine to repair itself. It helps it regenerate and heal, so it helps leaky gut. Um, it has a lot of other benefits too. Um, it helps support brain health, it helps muscle tissue, and it helps uh, the body burn fat. So, um, uh, which is another conversation. So that is my supplements. There's a lot of them. They're all in your PDF that you'll get. Um, uh, here is a link to the PDF. I'm going to give this to you, Poppy, but here's a link where people can download that PDF. And read it. Feel free to load it here on the chat for all the oh, people. Okay. Let me load it too. Okay. Um, oh, I think they can just, oh, can they just load it from there? If you guys click on that link. I'm going to load it to that. And I'm also going to put this PDF in here. Hold on. Perfect. So you'll have both options. Thank you. Depending on how, you know, how you're, okay, here it is. Beep. Read it. This was insanely amazing. My Thank mind you. is my mind is blown well it takes a lot to put in it takes a lot to take it's it's a lot but it's it's really not as hard as it seems but it takes it takes patience on our our behalf because you know we get we get frustrated and we struggle so um uh okay so do we have questions we have a ton of questions you guys go ahead and turn on your cameras if you haven't already i'm gonna go to gallery and let you guys ask away. 
Um, there are questions in the chat too. Uh, some people asked if yeast is a fungus or is fungal infection a yeast infection? Yes. So if you it, want to address is that. It is a fungus among us. Yes, it is. And um, I'm scrolling. So we're going to leave this live stream in the Cancer Free Canine Summit. I'll also make a copy for Rita. She can put it wherever she wants. You guys, this was crazy, valuable information. Rita never fails to just bring it. I'm telling you, you have always been a Cancer Free Canine Summit favorite all the way. I'm, you, I'm so glad I asked you to do this. I've never heard part of this at all. Like some of it I have, but this is the most complete yeast conversation I have ever witnessed in my whole life. Thank well, you. I'll probably talk about two more hours about it, but you know, it's a lot. So um, uh, what questions do we have? You guys, do you want to put it, you want to mute yourself? The question. Or um, do you have any questions on Facebook? Cause I can't see those. Yes. Well, Cassandra asked, does feeding in cans bring metal residual uh, residue into the food? Great question, Cassandra. Yes, it does. For and sure. so there is some hazards to being with metal. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I, I, I'm sorry, but uh, it uh, kind of went out. All I heard was metal. Oh. I didn't want to talk about that. Uh, the heavy metals in metal cans. And then somebody asked on Facebook, is it okay to slightly cook the food? Yeah, it's okay to slightly cook the food. Um, especially if you're, make sure that you're given the digestive enzymes. Um, uh, you know, I don't recommend feeding canned anything. Um, I mean, it's in my earthquake kit. Um, and the scary part about canned food being in my earthquake kit is it literally could be in that can for five years and still be okay, right? There's a reason. So, um, uh, you know, most cans are filled with BPA, which messes with hormonal function, uh, which messes with the liver. Um, I'm just not a big fan of it. I'm a fresh food feeder. Um, uh, so yeah, um, you definitely want to include the, the metal function of detoxing and dealing with yeast when you're, when you're dealing with cans. Um, and then we have. We have a question about filtering the water. So some people, um, somebody's asking about silica rich water, but also I have a well. So do you use a Berkey for that? What do you use? Yeah, um, so you can use a Berkey. Um, even if you're putting it through a Brita or like a pure filter is better than nothing. Um, uh, that removes cysts and different types of particles. Um, you know, I always include humic and fulvic acid in my dog's diet when, um, and even a pinch of Himalayan salt will add in back in the, the, the like 76 minerals that, you know, can be in non-filtered water, but um, you definitely want to filter out chlorine and fluoride if for yourself and your dog. Um, chlorine decreases um, uh, taurine. So, you definitely want to, uh, if you're not filtering for chlorine, you definitely want to do that. Um, uh, okay, so what else we got? Milk thistle, okay to feed long-term. Okay, so um, milk thistle. You A lot of times when you see milk thistle, you're seeing a standardized extract, okay? Um, if you're using a powder, like if you say, just type in milk thistle and even organic milk, milk thistle, you're probably going to get a standardized extract. Okay. It's important to use a standardized extract. Uh, if you have a dog with really, really high liver enzymes. Okay. That's a little different, but if you're just supporting the liver, um, I like to use just plain milk, organic milk thistle seed or grown organically milk thistle seed. You can, um, get that, uh, at organic wild organs, wild harvest, or you can get it as a tincture um, and just do a few drops. Um, I like to use a tincture of milk thistle seed a lot, or again, just the powder. Um, if you're doing the, just the milk thistle seed, yes, you can give it long-term for sure. 
Okay. Because um, not, I mean, it's not isolated. And I, the isolated one isn't, it, it's just the um, isolated constituent of milk thistle that does not have all the things that, that balance out that plant. So go ahead. All right. Somebody asked on Facebook about Dimidex. Uh, this is a conversation about yeast. Okay, so they were wondering if the the yeast was create could be creating demodex. No, like your dog's okay. immune system is your dog's liver and immune system need help. Okay, and I'll cool. tell you right now, if you're dealing with demodex, uh, go to Happy Dog Naturals, HappyDogNaturals.com. They specialize in demodex mange. It's all they do. Uh, and it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good company. And, and make sure you're feeding a clean diet. Yes. But it's your immune, it's the immune system. And if you can't figure the Demodex out, just uh, get a hold of me for a consult. We can get rid of it. And I mean, the yeast, the yeast ain't going to make it better. I mean, for sure. But, um, and, and yes, true. The, the Demodex because of the fact that the skin is being affected, it's more susceptible to external yeast, but it doesn't mean that your dog has a candida overgrowth on the inside. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Somebody made a comment about yeasty paws being called free toes. Yeah, free toes. <laughs> that's funny. I thought that was hilarious. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Um, and yes, I do like smelly. Uh, those too that smell like Doritos. Um, what about kelp and the iodine aspect? What do you mean? Like iodine seems to kill everything. <laughs> so I was just wondering if adding something like that might also be beneficial, but I'll, I mean, um, you've listed so at least 40 things, I think. I was, yeah. I was taking notes on the live feed. I'm like, oh, how do you spell that? <laughs> uh, kelp, is, kelp is okay. Uh, it's not one of my top remedies at all. Um, it's definitely, I find it to be uh, warming. Um, so I only give it to dogs that are cool um, uh, in long-term. Um, in short-term, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not, it's definitely not um, my top remedy for yeast at all. You know? Yeah, I was just thinking for the heavy metal aspect and chlorella versus spirulina, you seem to lean a little more to the chlorella in the beginning and then maybe roll into the spirulina. So the spirulina is not a binder like chlorella. Okay. Yeah. It's a fortifier and it's nutritious and it's something that can fill in nutritional gaps in a diet um, without feeding yeast, but it's not a binder to my knowledge. I could be wrong, but um uh, just so everyone knows, I could be wrong about so many things, but um, that's not my experience. Sure. Okay. Um, you guys, I have not downloaded the link yet because it's on my Zoom and my Zoom's not on my phone. So I have to convert it. So I apologize. I'm getting all these little messages like, where's the link? Where's the, where's the okay, link? So the do you have any questions on Facebook that I can't see, Poppy? I am gauging that and I'm trying to pull up your phone. Okay, so I'm going to answer these questions that are on, on Zoom right now. Perfect. I'm going to pull up your, your link then. Okay, so. Uh, okay, I'm looking at it. Um, did, 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 did. So, uh, let's see, uh, Cassandra's got a yeasty pit bull who licks her feet when she's left alone. Um, Another good uh, feet licking remedy, Cassandra, is poria mushroom. Um, hi, hello, okay, from Winnipeg. Uh, that's when I thought I wasn't online. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, I did blank out a couple times. My wife, I got catty, catty wampus. That's okay. So. Mercury's in retrograde, so I'm surprised we even had this conversation. Um, okay. Um, looking for questions. If a dog has a few, but not all of the symptoms of yeast and likely has yeast, is it imperative to avoid any fruit in any amount? Yes. If you think your dog has yeast, avoid fruit. Some dog foods have apple or blueberry as ingredient along with protein. So if you have a dog with yeast, okay, 
What you want to do is you want to stop feeding commercial raw unless it's meat, bone, and organ. Don't feed any of the, you're going to see a lot of fruit and veg in different types of commercial um, foods. And <clears throat> one moment, please. And you, you guys, to... if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, let me know if you can access that link, if that opens up or not, please. <laughs> so you want to avoid that. You want to switch to a basic diet. Um, and like I said, it can be as basic as I'm okay. So here's a diet that, uh, I recently gave a client, uh, had a warm dog, um, ground beef, organic ground beef, 95, five. Um, you can go as you can do the 80, 20, but I like, I like the, either the 15 or the five. That's my preference. Um, Four Leaf Rover Better Bones Powder, uh, Four Leaf Rover Guts and Glory, um, had phytoplankton and chlorella, uh, and called that done for 12 weeks. Um, and then had different types of uh, herbs and, and supplements. But um, yeah, uh, dog's doing fantastic. Yeast is completely dying. Black spots are going away. Um, and you know, later on, they can go back to a more balanced, you know, veggie diet when it's, it, the yeast isn't going to come right back if you do it right, for sure. Oh, and I did want to mention, um, I forgot to mention the kit, kits. So um, there are some kits on the market. I did put it in my PDF about the kits. Um, there's the Adored Beast Leaky Gut and the um, Yeasty Beast Kit. Um, uh, Julianne, for dogs that have yeast, because there is probably a leaky gut component there, she will do two weeks of the yeasty beast, two weeks of the leaky gut, and flip flop back and forth. Okay. Um, I sell those kits in my store. I like those kits. They're a good place to start to see how they work. Um, the adored beast kits are pretty neutral. Uh, that means cool and warm dogs can use them. Um, there's a, a leaky gut kit from, uh, four leaf Rover that I sell in my store. That's more warming. So it's going to be really good for a dog that, um, is cool. You know, a dog that is always seeking out warm places that always wants to be warm. That's a, I, I definitely would use that one if I had a cool dog because it's much more energetically appropriate. Um, those kits are good. Uh, but I find that with the kits, I like to start out with a quarter of the dose or a half a dose of what's recommended and then slowly work my way up. I think for a lot of dogs, the dosages are too much. And that's, you know, when you're a manufacturer and you're building a product line, you have to have a general dosage that you put on your products. A lot of people hate my website because I don't have a lot of dosages on there because dogs are individuals and I'm selling a lot of liquid extracts. So um, I usually get emails like, you know, what can I give my, like, how much do I give my dog? And I don't mind answering those emails because it's important that they get the right amount. But when you're dealing with general, like highly manufactured things for general dogs, you have general dosages. And it's really important with yeast to go slow and to start out super small. Okay. Um, but those kits are really good, good places to start. Um, and they have a lot of the herbs that I was talking about tonight in them. Um, okay. Uh, somebody asked about, uh, four leaf rovers, um, yeast free supplements. Yeah. Yeast free Fido. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a good one. And like I said, I like it more for dogs that are on the cooler side, but the yeast free Fido is a good one. And they're, I believe it's their gut guard, the gut guard, and you can buy it as an individual product. Um, is, is somewhat cooling. So, um, uh, okay. So, uh, let's see anything else here would organic. And, and you guys, the PDF is amazing. Like this has been insane. Rita, you, <laughs> you over delivered like nobody. And you well, always, you know, that. the problem is, is that what happens is, is when I do these talks 
everyone asks, well, how much of this and how much of that and how much is this? So I just spent an hour or two just making that PDF. Um, uh, and I can use it again in the future. So would organic raw meat have heavy metals in it or is it safe because it's organic? Okay, so organic is much better than non-organic, okay? Especially for the pesticides, herbicides, the glyphosates, um, which contribute to heavy metals in the body. And unfortunately, we are living in such a polluted environment uh, right now that yes, you can pretty much guarantee that your dog has metals. If you wanna see what their metal profile is like, do hair testing. Um, I think Dr. Tobias still does hair testing and you can do hair testing through other labs as well. But it's a really great way to see what metals your dog has a lot of. Um, Rita is like a walking encyclopedia. Well, I appreciate that. I've been at this a long time. Okay, is milk thistle okay to give to? Yes, yes, we discussed that. If it's the seed, not the standardized extract. I recently read that boiling water actually increases the fluoride. Well, you shouldn't be using fluoride water. You should get a um, you should get a filter to filter out the fluoride like Berkey. Um, it may, I do not know that answer that it, it if it increases fluoride, but um, for anyone drinking fluoride water, you should probably stop. Um, I was told to never use a filter for well water because organisms can thrive and grow in the filter. Well, you want to change out your filters um, for sure. Um, but a lot of well waters have a lot of minerals in them, really heavy minerals, you know, especially things. Um, uh, there's some really great wells out there. Have your well tested. That's one of the biggest things that you can do. Just figure out what you're dealing with and then you can get the appropriate filter. And testing your well water, you can do that online. You can do that with some really great at home kits or you can have someone come out for like a hundred bucks and test it. Um, how can I, I, I love the fact that you're like, it's scary to go like raw meat and a couple supplements for 12 weeks. And I love that you address that, you know, stay steady. Don't freak out. Your dog's not going to get nutritionally imbalanced. And, and that's such a comfort, at least, yeah, and you me, know, because I just fruit my dog's diet down to minimum and he's thriving on it. And I keep going and I do, I do put humic acid in it. Um, but in the back of my, and I do do broccoli, which I probably have to take that out now. Um, yes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, well, I, I, broccoli sprouts might be a better option there. There's, they're, you know, they're low sugar. So, um, one of the things that people need to realize that if you gave your dog just ground hamburger, right. And a few supplements, um, they could live raw hamburger. I'm not talking about cooked. They could live a very long time on that. Um, it's preferable to have a balanced diet. That's why we had the calcium and we had the organ, the organ, the organ fresh or, or freeze dried, um, freeze dried powder has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. It has a lot of trace minerals in it. Then you add a humic and fulvic acid supplement and you add a super green like chlorella or spirulina or phytoplankton. And, you know, you have a lot of things covered in that diet. Um, and definitely for a short period of time. Um, I'm sure people who have listened to me talk before, um, you know, I had a dog named Susie who lived between 24 and 26 years old. Um, wow. Let me tell you what she ate, okay? She ate farm scraps. That's it. She never ate dog food. She did not eat a balanced diet. I was a kid, you know, until I was like 18. I, I didn't care what she ate. My dad fed her raw cow's milk, um, scraps, from my mother's cooking, which my mother cooked whole foods, um, vegetables and uh, raw meat. That is a raw and cooked meat. That's what my, my Susie ate. She had no balanced diet. Um, she got everything she, you know, she foraged on her own on our property. You know, I definitely, what she came with me when we used to pick apples and blueberries and she'd eat blueberries and, you know, um, she was a super sweet dog. She was a Collie Shepherd mix and she died. It's a family debate, but between the ages of 24 and 26 years old, what she didn't do is she didn't get spayed. 
and she never was vaccinated. So, because we were farm people, you know, we never did any of that to our animals as well. And my dad, you know, gave her some herbs when she didn't feel good. My dad was not an herbalist. He was a farmer <laughs> who knew how to use herbs, but, um, uh, yeah. So, you know, when we're dealing with yeast, don't worry so much about every nutritional gap being in there worry about what the yeast is doing to the dog because the yeast, the overgrowth of yeast can, can cut down on a simulation of nutrients. So if you have a dog with a really systemic yeast infection, eating a really expensive diet, they not, may not be getting half of what they should be getting from that food. And, you know, feeding pasteurized, not pasteurized, pastured, not pasteurized, pastured eggs, organic free range eggs. And even if they're not organic, the feed is organic or they're foraging, the, the, the hens are out there on the grass, you know, pastured eggs is a really good way to get minerals and vitamins and minerals and certain things that eggs have like taurine um, in them in the diet while you're doing this. They, eggs do not feed yeast. Eggshell membrane, give them the whole thing. Um, so, uh, um, I have two dogs with, oh, hold on, go ahead. Oh, go, Krista Doyle asks, um, can she just like cold turkey off kibble or does she make that slow? Um, I would probably, some people cold turkey, it depends on your dog. Okay. Some people cold turkey, some people start doing like a kibble meal in the morning and then a, like, a. I would do slightly cooked and then kind of work your way into raw, um, like seared, you know? Um, and then don't feed that at the same time because it breaks down at a different level, you know? Slowly work a second meal in there that's fresh food and bring down the kibble, bring down the kibble. Two weeks, you're done. Um, uh, someone said, I have two dogs with elevated liver enzymes and yeast. Can you please explain milk thistle again? Okay, so if you have two dogs with elevated liver enzymes, make sure you're not overfeeding your dog in any way, shape or form, because it can cause elevated liver enzymes. I always like to put that out there. Um, number two, uh, if you have the elevated liver enzymes, then go ahead and use a product like Oregon's Wild Harvest Milk Thistle, which is a standardized extract and a, the seed. I would use that. If they're super high, then go ahead and use uh, the, the brand Solgar, S-O-L-G-A-R, uh, milk thistle. It's a standardized milk, S milk thistle extract. Um, I like to mix that with vitamin E and lycopod homeopathic lycopodium. Lycopodium, 200 C. Um, but um, uh, yeah, you give the standardized extract uh, and get those... Uh, get those enzymes down. Um, and if you can't just contact me and we'll figure out why they're high in the first place. Um, I feed my kids organic pumpkin puree in a BP free can. Should I stop that? Um, if your dog has yeast overgrowth, remember this is a yeast overgrowth conversation, giving them pureed pumpkin in a can, um, a BPA free can is not the end of the world for sure. What I do with that is I, I, I kind of core the can and take out the middle and leave the sides. Um, um, but uh, it's not the end of the world. No, if your dog has yeast, do not give them pumpkin. Um, for anyone Kim who's heard me speak before, um, know that I tend to always stay on subject. Uh, okay, so- Kim Winkler's asking organ oh. harvest or organ wild harvest? Oregon, Oregon's wild harvest is a good Oregon's brand. with an S wild harvest. Yeah. Oh, and I have a question about, um, organ meat. So are you concerned about like feeding raw liver because it's a toxic, you know, it detoxifies the animal. Are you worried about the toxins that might be in the liver? I always wonder. Oh, about so that. that is a fallacy. Okay. okay. Um, in fact, I used to I used to believe the same thing until someone explained to me that the liver is a pass-through, okay? Um, 
it doesn't filter and keep the toxins in it. Okay, it deals with phase one, phase one and phase two detoxification. Phase one takes things that come at the liver and it makes them less toxic, okay? And then phase two, this is a really simplified version of this, um, but say phase two is happening at the same time, but it's usually phase one is too active and phase two can't keep up. That's when we get sluggish liver, okay? It doesn't store the toxins in it. It bypasses, it sends, it makes them less toxic and then sends them out to be excreted by the large intestine, the skin, the lungs, and the kidneys, okay? So the issue is, is that liver isn't as healthy as it used to be. So I like to do organic liver or grass-fed liver, okay? Um, interesting story. Um, don't have all the recollection details, but basically this farmer from the 1960s used to talk about how when on his farm, when they'd slaughter the cows, um, the livers, they would take out the livers, um, the livers would glisten. Oh, they the, it, like fascia, like fascia, right? They would glisten and look like a rainbow. Okay. Because of all of the nutrition that used to be found in the soils and the grasses. Um, and then as pollution started to take hold, the liver stopped glistening. He, he, he said he hadn't seen it since the night, since the late 1960s. Um, and so liver isn't as healthy as it used to be, but if you're gonna feed liver, make sure it comes from an organic source. Grass-fed, grass-fed or organic. And that means grass-fed and grass-finished. A lot of, there's green washing or I call grass washing and they say, oh, it's grass, fed, but then they go to the corn feedlot for two weeks before they slaughtered. So you want to oh. make sure they're grass fed and grass finished. Um, and, and Rita, somebody asked about meats, mixing meats. Like, do you do two different types of meats? Do you stay away from chicken? Um, okay. So this yeah. is a yeast conversation and okay. uh, you can mix meats if you want. I do not stay away from chicken. I try to source my chicken from pasteurized or I keep saying that pastured chicken, pastured chicken, support your local farmer. Great. If we support our local farmers more, we'll have a lot more local farms. Um, uh, okay. Any, I'm looking for other questions. Uh, okay. And anybody on Facebook, any other questions that we have not gotten to please repost them. Uh, bone broth has ACV. Will right. bone broth be suitable for adding the digestive enzymes for a warm dog? Um, if your warm dog does not um, react to that bone broth at all, uh, check its ears about 30 minutes after the bone broth. If they're super hot, don't give the bone broth. Um, otherwise, just use um, a little unfermented uh, goat's milk. Um, uh, or something they might lick or, um, um, something they might just, you know, you could put it up in like in a little bit of like beef. You could just put it in a little bit, make a little beef meatball. They can plop in their mouth, the smallest one possible. Um, when you are doing the limited diet for yeast, should homemade dehydrated meat work for treats? Sure. I'll contact you about my liver. Okay. Is cilantro, hold on. I love that. this question about is cilantro, cilantro and working the same as parsley. Um, you can use cilantro and parsley together, or you can use it separate. Parsley is warming. Um, my pets love my pets love goat's milk, but almost impossible to get in Canada. Um, I think you can get uh, the Honest Kitchen dehydrated goat's milk. Oh, look for dehydrated goat's milk. You can order that through the mail and it's super light. Um, okay, Facebook question. Shaja asks, how do you balance skin pH topically when experience a yeast style? Um, I like to spray apple cider vinegar on it. Organic apple cider vinegar with the mother. Um, also, uh, there's a product from Farm Dog Naturals called Harmony. Um, that's a really good uh, topical to use for on yeast. Um, the cedars of Lebanon and the uh, almost compestrous, the, the mountain elm that I have on the PDF, 
The mountain elm is for wet skin conditions and the cedars is for dry skin conditions. You can mix a few drops of that with like witch hazel or apple cider vinegar and spray that on the skin. Rita, um, when you use witch hazel, do you make your own or do you buy a pre-made witch hazel? I buy distilled locally from our local herb shop. Okay. They distill it. I love it. Mount Capra makes a dehydrated goat milk. Yes, it does. Um, uh, any other questions? What kind of bones? What? What kind of bones? So Gina Janai is asking um, to feed bones. What do you recommend? Because you oh. mentioned meat and bone in the diet. Sorry about that, oh. Rita. <laughs> so be, like knuckle bones are good. The beef bones, don't ever cook them. Um, uh, chicken, chicken thighs, chicken wings, um, uh, different part, uh, turkey necks. Um, uh, I mean, that's more cartilage, but, um, uh, just the, 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 what are those? The, they're the knuckle bones. My dogs eat knuckle bones, right? Beef knuckle bones. Um, and Diane's asking about pH water. Do you, what do you think about pH water? pH water? For yeast. I don't know what pH water is. I know what catalyst water is. Um, like some people are really adamant about drinking like eight point something pH alkaline water. And no, I don't. So yeah, alkaline, I don't believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's fine for dogs that have cancer and don't have yeast overgrowth, but dogs that have yeast overgrowth, you do not want to give them alkaline water because alkalinity breeds yeast. And um, I, my dog had a catheter and I gave him an alkaline water and he filled up his catheter bag every single hour. It put out so much urine. It was insane, like out yeah. of control. He was not drinking that much water, but his urine output was absolutely crazy. April Alcantara is asking about Malaysia yeast. Is that's it treated the same, the same way? Candida overgrowth. Okay, thank you. I've yeah, never that's, heard that's of that a, term. That's vet, that's vet speak. Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. Thank that's you, April. Same thing. same thing. I think we're good. Did okay, we get so, it all? <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think, I mean, no, but I mean, we, I think we got a good start. We got a good sta start. Uh, how about H2O tablets in the water? I don't know what that means. I have no idea about I don't H2O know what an tablet. H2O tablet is. But um, um, so I, I don't, I try not to speak to anything that I don't know about. I'll just tell you, I don't know. Um, I'm learning every day, every day. So um, uh, slow and steady wins the race is the most important part. Be patient, be patient, be patient, okay? Um, you can find me uh, at canineherbalist.com and you can find my community and my courses um, and consulting at canine herbalism.com uh, and that's where I have my private subscription community I also have um, and that just started uh, we have about 50 members so far that's exclusive okay. content uh, live Q&A's every month um, uh, lots of uh, topic based everything is based on topics so you can find things easily in my community um, and I also have a materia monthly medica monthly it's um, basically one herb per month that goes super in depth. Um, it's basically a precursor to my book. Um, that's one herb each month. I think it's like 10 or $12 a month. Um, I've done milk thistle and cleaver so far. And then I have my energetics course at canineherbalism.com. And then I'll also have my phytoembryonic therapy training coming up as well as my level one canine uh, herbalism. Um, and there'll be a level one, level two, and possibly a level three for those. Now you guys, Rita does one-on-one -on -one consultations too. So if you are terrified to do this off the PDF and just go at it on your own, contact Rita. She's available. She's amazing. Yes. Contact me. I do have a waiting list right now, but um, I'm still, <laughs> I'm definitely taking clients if you are not in a super, super duper hurry. So, um, uh, okay, well, thanks guys. I really had a good time, Poppy. Um,
You are amazing. Thank you. I learned so much. I'm almost, you know, I almost get rocked to tears when you talk. Every time I'm like, oh, oh, oh my God, <laughs> you know so much. It's so incredible. Well, so. it's taken me a long time to know a lot. Um, uh, and I'm learning every day and I have some really great teachers as well. So um, everyone needs a mentor. We're all at different levels. You know, I might know a lot, but compared to some of my mentors, I, I sit there and go, <laughs> oh my God. Well, so you've anyways, learned from, uh, you've learned uh, from the best. I mean, you've learned from the best human herbalists. And so I'm you, trying. you've definitely, yeah, you've done an amazing job. Read it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. You for are your welcome. Passion. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. God Thank bless. you very much, guys. Take care. Take care, you guys. Bye. <laughs>